Welcome back into College Football Live. Let's take a look at some of these quarterbacks that we saw this week make their debut. And from Georgia, it was Carson back 294 yards and a touchdown in his first career start. Didn't play in the fourth quarter. Here's his head coach, Kirby Smart, some feedback. There's going to be incompletions in games. There's going to be looks that maybe they fool you with. You didn't see in the week in scouting report. But his run check game, his uh, carrying out his fakes, his decision in the pocket, him throwing the ball away, I mean, Guy, I thought the guy for a first start played really well. So Georgia would knew it was him, but let's go to Ohio State where we just recently found out it was Kyle McCord. He had 239 passing yards, didn't have a touchdown though, and one interception in his second career start. This is only the third game under Ryan Day since 2018 where the team has had zero passing touchdowns. Then in Alabama, no depth chart, but it is indeed Jalen Milrow, who is the quarterback, 193 yards, three touchdowns for him. First Alabama player with three passing touchdowns and two rushing touchdowns in a single game. So you're asking me to speculate, and I, I ask a, answer a hypothetical question about how some guy's going to perform in the future. I don't really know. I mean, I love him. I think he's doing well. He's a good competitor. He'll do everything he can to play his best. But I don't, I don't have – this is a Coke bottle. It's not a crystal ball. Keith Hamill, this is a pink pen. It's not a crystal ball. But I am asking you to <laughs> use your crystal ball and tell us what you think that we're going to see out of the quarterback positions at both Ohio State and Alabama moving forward. Let's start with Alabama. Well, no matter what, what you look into for the uh, future for your fortune teller, uh, it seems pretty obvious Jalen Milrow will get the start against Texas on Saturday, Kelsey. Uh, he led Alabama to six touchdown drives, and after those six drives, they put Tyler Buckner in the game. So if Nick Saban wanted some semblance of competition, he could have done it when the game was already a blowout in the second quarter. Uh, the way Saban played the quarterbacks marked a clear line of delineation between one and two, and Jalen Milrow did did Nick, what Nick Saban wanted. He was efficient, he managed the game, he didn't turn the ball over. As for Kyle McCord, he did turn the ball over, but he had a solid performance for Ohio State in his first career start. The numbers were good, not great. He did not have a touchdown pass, but Kyle McCord looked really strong in flashes. He used tight end Cade Stover, who was the player of the game, for five catches. And what he did was play well enough where Ohio State didn't go to him until the fourth series. Uh, one issue looming for him as he tries to hold off Devin Brown, who we'll likely see more of against Youngstown on Saturday, is that Ohio State's offensive line looks suspect in parts. Travion Henderson, for example, had two less yards per carry on Saturday than his career average. We always appreciate the insight and can't wait to see what happens with both of those quarterback spots. Let's go back to Sam and Rod now. And you guys, I want to take this a different direction. Are you more excited about the Alabama offense or are you more concerned about the Ohio State offense? So, Rod, how are we feeling? More excited about Bama, more concerned about Ohio State? I'm good with Bama. And I don't want to overly panic about Ohio State, but I'm worried. You know, uh, Kyle McCord got beat up. He got hit an awful lot. That offensive line did not protect him. And probably the most distressing thing was that Marvin Harrison Jr. was essentially a decoy during that game. He only caught two passes. And he worked on his blocking because that's primarily what they used him for. But to have the best receiver in the country and really not target him and not get him involved in the game, Sam, is kind of odd in your first game of the season. So I'm concerned about the pass protection, and I'm concerned about not getting Marvin Harrison Jr. involved in the game plan. Yeah, I've got concerns as well, Rod. A lot of that has to do with early on. I get it, Devin Brown didn't come in until the third or fourth series, but he came in right after a Kyle McCord interception in the first half. And so this quarterback competition still seemingly may be ongoing, but poor, poor first half performances are not going to help. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.